Coming soon to a podcast feed near you. I suppose I should say something for the record. I told you, I fucking told you, Liam! There's something here! Look, look at this! Nary the poor soul who has to listen to this. There is nothing there! God, you, you really can't stop, can you? There is no stupid, scary monster. I don't know why I'm being punished for this case. Who are you? What the fuck did you do? I just wanted to watch and see what would happen. I don't know if I'm going to make it to your tower, Reese. I'm scared. I I thought we had more time. Alex? Alex, do you copy? Please. Please answer. I... I can't do this by myself. I can't do any of this by myself. Well, let's begin. Do you copy? A horror podcast. Listen to season one anywhere you get your podcasts. Hello, my name is Arthur D. Hart, and I'm the owner and lead writer of Dreadwood Press Radio. Dreadwood Press Radio is a show about a crime-ridden town high up in the mountains. It starts off as an anthology where you hear about a gothic cowboy and a mysterious pawn shop on the edge of town where not everything in the forest is quite as it seems. You can find Dreadwood anywhere you stream your podcasts, and you can visit our website, deepwoodprod.com. If you want to send us an email or give us a shout, you can email us at deepwoodprod at gmail.com. And you can find us on Twitter at Radio Dreadwood. Thanks so much for listening, and uh, hey, be safe out there. The following podcast may contain some strong language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. Your feet are firmly on the ground. Your imagination really wants to You're listening to Strange New Worlds and Spaced Out Tales, a sci-fi audio drama anthology podcast. Episode 11, Just Another Day in the Big Apple. A truly stupendous sight is how eyewitnesses are describing it. If you're just joining us, the headlines this morning utterly dominated by the unprecedented events taking place high over the skies of New York City. You're seeing live pictures from the Big Apple right now. A little after 9 a.m. local time this morning, what can only be described as a colossal airborne vehicle of unknown origin descended through the atmosphere and proceeded to hover over the downtown region. Government sources, the Pentagon and NASA, have released statements advising that none of them know what it is or where it came from, but all have categorically confirmed that they are confident that it almost certainly is extraterrestrial. If this, in fact, is the case, then we are currently witnessing a major moment in world history, for we are currently being visited by beings from another world. Here we go. This way, Mr. President. Straight into the car, if you will. What the hell is this? I'd barely gotten inside that school. The kids were halfway through pledging allegiance when you came rushing in. Is it an attack? Terrorists? We'll brief you fully when the situation is secure, sir. Okay, bring the car around. Make some room, please. Okay, straight into the car, please, sir. They're fueling the plane at the airfield. We're what, five minutes away? Affirmative. Five minutes. We're good. Let's go. Move out. 
So, what are we dealing with? Bombs, shooters, not planes again. We'll brief you shortly, sir. We just need to get you in the air. <sighs> Typical. I've been stuck in D.C. for three months. I finally get some time outside the capital. My visit lasts all of five goddamn minutes. And we can go live now to Rod Teller, down in Central Park, where a large crowd is gathered under the shadow of a giant craft hanging over the city. What's the mood down there, Rod? Thank you, Steve. New York City has seen its fair share of drama over the decades, good and bad. If you asked your average New Yorker yesterday what the most significant event to have happened here, you'd probably expect them to say 9-11. But even New York has never witnessed anything quite like this before. Behind me, you can see the police cordon. This is as close as we can get, as you can see. All around, people are gathering. And up there, that's what they've come to look at. A huge, hulking mass of incredible proportions. Origin unknown, somewhere other than this planet. You'd be forgiven thinking this is a scene from a Hollywood sci-fi blockbuster. But no, this is very real. It's just hanging there, defying our Earth's gravity, but making no sound. It's almost eerie the way it's just suspended there, not moving. The mood here is partly wonder and awe, but with an ever-growing sense of curiosity. What is this thing? What kind of extraterrestrial race could have created it? And most importantly, why are they here? The question on people's minds, is this District 9, or could this be more Independence Day? This is Rod Teller in Central Park, handing back to the studio. This way, Mr. President. Yes, thank you. I'm familiar with how stairs work. They're fueled up and ready to go, Stat. Okay, we're on board. Close her up. Everyone take your seats and belts on, please. Any chance I could grab a coffee? Once we're in the air, sir. We are all in place, ready to roll. Repeat, ready to roll. I knew it was a mistake missing breakfast this morning. I'm starving. And I don't govern well without caffeine. Eagle is in the air. Repeat, Eagle is airborne. You can go through to your ready room now, Mr. President. Thanks. Coffee. Black. With as many sugars as my doctor will allow. I'll get right on it, sir. Now you, come with me and tell me what this is all about. Absolutely, sir. At just before 9 a.m. local time, this appeared over New York, sir. Okay. What the hell is that? We aren't completely sure, sir. And what's it doing? Is it attacking? Presently, it's just... hanging there, sir. Just hanging there? Hanging there doing what? Has anyone disembarked? It's holding at an altitude of 1,500 feet. Has been since it arrived. No sign of activity. Its position hasn't changed. It's just... hanging there. So, is this the Chinese? The Russians? It can't be the North Koreans. They'd never build anything that big and actually get it to fly. It's not one of ours, is it? Who the hell could build something like that? It's categorically not ours. Its origin is unknown at this point, sir. But we must know where I flew in from. Something that big. We couldn't have failed to spot that immediately. How long have we been tracking it? And why wasn't I informed about it earlier? Sir, you have to understand. As best we know, no nation has this kind of capability. Not us, not anyone else. It didn't come from anywhere. On Earth. Excuse me? It's not of terrestrial origin. Hang on! You're not implying aliens, are you? Come on! Seriously? 
NASA and the SSN both picked it up only seconds before it emerged visibly over New York. Until that point, their monitoring was clear. It's like it literally appeared out of nowhere, right on our doorstep. And we're absolutely sure this isn't the Chinese. If anyone has cracked the kind of stealth tech this thing is obviously using, it would most likely be them. Beijing have been contacted. They're just as curious about it as us. So are Moscow, London, Berlin, and Paris. So this has gone public already? Mr. President, it's a giant spacecraft hovering in plain sight over one of the most densely populated areas on the planet. It's gone super viral. The internet is literally melting. It is the only news story anywhere in the world right now. Everyone knows about it. Well, holy shit! This is big, right? Yes, Mr. President. It's potentially the most significant event in human history. Get NASA on the line, ASAP! I want to know everything they know. We'll be patching you through to them in ten minutes, sir. And where the hell is my coffee? Most significant event in human history, and I'm sat here running on empty. Caffeine! Now! Good morning, Gloria. How's my favorite gal? Good morning, Glenn. I'm good. It's all changes on your schedule this morning, though. Okay. How so? Your 9 a.m., 9.30, 10, and 10.30 appointments have all canceled. 10 a.m. was J.P. Morgan. They never cancel. What the hell is going on? Probably this morning's developments. What? The spaceship? Seriously? There's a lot of... Uh... Uncertainty, Glenn. My ass there is. It's a normal day like any other. Except there is a huge spaceship hovering over the city. That's all. And where is everyone? It's like a morgue in the office. Is there some meeting going on? Only Klein and Maria have showed up so far. What? Where the hell are the rest of those lazy bastards? Oh, tell me they haven't skipped off to Central Park to gawk at the aliens. Hardly any of them have given any explanation for their absence, but... Yeah, I'd guess they thought the events trumped their day job. Bullshit! Well, I'm glad you're not a lazy waste of space, Gloria. Right. Can you get a list of names of everyone who hasn't showed up today? I'll be emailing them all to let them know their immediate positions, uh... Under review. Will do. Coffee? Hell yes. I'll be out on the office floor trying to make some money with the people who bothered to show up. Good morning, financial warriors. Someone better ask the numbers for me. Morning, Glenn. We weren't sure if you'd be in today. What with... What with what, Klein? The aliens? Is that it? Well, there's a lot of uncertainty and... Do I look uncertain to you, Klein? Don't answer that. Clearly, you can see that of all the things I might be displaying, such as sheer fiery anger for hardly anyone bothering to turn up this morning, uncertainty absolutely isn't factoring into my demeanor. So, it's just business as usual, then? Yes! Of course! Why would it be any different? I just thought... Uh, that was another of my rhetorical questions, Klein. Let it be known. When things are normal, we play the markets and we make as much money as we can. When things go weird, we analyze the situation, look for advantages, then we play the markets again, and we make as much money as we can. The situation climb can change, but the game remains the same. Now where the hell is Maria? Right here, Glenn. Atta girl, there she is. It's briefing time. See, and as we have the office to ourselves, and all my morning appointments have blown me off in favor of spending time emptying their fear bladders, we're going to do this right here. Both of you, back here in five minutes with the definitive state of the universe. Go, go, go! Brothers and sisters, all of you gracious children of Almighty God, it's so great to see so many of you on this fine morning. Now, permit me, if you will, to gauge the weight of 
public opinion among you wonderful folks here in this room. I trust you're all aware of the events that are taking place above our very heads, yes? Yes, indeed! On this day, a day that will be remembered in history, we have been sent a vision in the heavens, brothers and sisters. Can I get an amen? amen. And I know some of you have been having your doubts. Some of you will have watched the news this morning and will be hearing this talk of spacecraft, extraterrestrials, aliens. And you might be asking, why, Pastor Jordan, this isn't foretold in the Bible. This can't be part of Almighty God's plan, surely. Am I right? Well, to those who have debts, let me tell you, you are not alone. Outside, right now, are millions of our souls looking up at that enormous vision in the sky, wondering what in God's name is going on. They're looking up, eyes wide with anticipation as to whether the arrival of this thing is going to bring meaning to their lives. Will it provide answers to the questions they seek? Will it bring order to this chaotic world we inhabit? Or maybe we'll bring wrath and terrible vengeance down upon us in ways of fire. The question that I am asking, brothers and sisters, the question on my mind is this. They're out there, looking up, staring blankly at the sky. But you, all of you, are in here. Now why do you think that is? This day that has brought this extraordinary visitation to our planet, to our city, to our district, above this church, our very own church, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you this, it can only be a sign from Almighty God. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, brothers and sisters. And in the sky on this very day, are we not seeing the most incredible example of his power and his glory? I put it to you, brothers and sisters, that which we see in the sky above us, this spacecraft, this UFO, Come up what you will, that this is in fact a holy chariot piloted by angels sent by Almighty God Himself. We are here, together, gathered as one, because we have prayed for His love, we have prayed for His wisdom, we have prayed for His guidance and His forgiveness for all mortal sins. And God has answered us, brothers and sisters. He hears us now, as he has always heard every single one of us praising his name. And so, I say to you, we are here today to pray for those outside, looking up at the sky. We pray for their souls, their poor, misguided, lost souls. We say, come unto the church. Come on to this church. Join with me. Throw off those shackles that have held you in the dark for so long. Come unto his light. Feel the love of Jesus. His power, his glory. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Came unto us and be saved. Okay, listen up. I'm going to be talking to the president in five minutes. He is expecting answers, and I currently have only two things to give him. Jack and shit. Needless to say, neither of those are anything he wants to hear right now. So people, give me something. Anything. Clarence, 
Well, we estimate the craft is approximately the size, in terms of its profile, of Lower Manhattan. Uh, actually, latest estimates have revised that up to the size of the whole of Manhattan. Right. It's big. It's very, very big. I don't think the president needs NASA to point that out. Frankly, he can see that himself with his own two eyes. What else do we know? Ed, we're observing from afar. Like everyone else. We can only speculate. That's okay, Mary. I understand. But what have you speculated on so far? We can't get any firm estimation of its mass. It's hanging there in a way that defies all technology that we're aware of. So we have no realistic idea about the tonnage. And the composition of the craft, we've observed no joints, moldings, evidence of recognizable manufacturing techniques. It's almost like the whole structure was somehow cast in a single piece. Likewise, we cannot see any evidence of portals, windows, or recognizable openings, so we can't speculate on its interior, assuming it's not a completely solid entity. We had no indication of its arrival. It literally just appeared on our scopes at an altitude of some 20,000 feet, and it descended at a controlled, uniform rate before coming to a complete stop at its current position, where it has remained solidly ever since. We've observed no lights or auditory signs from it, nor any evidence of electronic transmissions or signals of any kind. So, what you're both telling me is that we know absolutely everything about what we don't know about it, and what we do know about it totals almost nothing? Well, except that it's approximately the size- Yes, that it's approximately the size of Lower Manhattan, or possibly the whole of Manhattan. Well, great. I'm sure the president will be overjoyed at this insight that I'm not about to provide him. (sighs) Fine. Back at your stations, See if there is anything else you can fail to find out for me. I'm here with some folks who've come out to witness this incredible spectacle firsthand. You, sir, can you tell me why you're here? Yes, Rod. I came out here to send a message. A message? What kind of message do you want to send? To our buddies up there in the spaceship. It takes a lot of nerd to turn up at someone's front door uninvited. Let me tell you this, they've had better come here in peace, or we'll kick their alien asses and send them home in pieces. God bless America. Is that you, Song? Afternoon, Pa. You're late again. Pa, you're literally watching the news. You know what's happening today. I wanted to go check it out. It's a day like any other day, son. There is still work to be done. It don't go nowhere for no one. It's still your responsibility for doing it. Pa, it's a spaceship. This could change the world forever. So what? It's a damn spaceship. They showed up, I just sitting there, big deal. I've been here since 6 in the a.m. I opened up, stocked the shelves, put out the trash, served some customers, all before those lazy alien assholes showed up. You were supposed to be here at 10 a.m. It's not like I even asked you to get out of bed at the crack of dawn, but you can't even manage that. This is a once in a lifetime situation, Pa. But I wouldn't expect you to understand. What in the hell do you mean by that? This, this store, this work, this life, Pa. He resents me for bringing up rat, for trying to teach you the virtues of an honest day's work. Pa, no. You know I don't resent you. I respect you. You got a funny way of showing it. I respect you for everything you've done, for me, and how hard you work. You better had. But, but nothing. I don't need or want your respect. I want you to put the efforts in. I want to see if things should be tired, but knowing you put a shift in. This store, this our family's history, our legacy, this is what we've given to the world. Pa, it's just a store. I know what it is, son. My great-grandfather started our business selling the goods off the back of a horse-drawn wagon. 
his son built this place. Literally, he put down the foundation and laid the damn bricks. And his son, my father, built this place up to be the most respected establishment in the whole district. That was a different time, Pa. Damn straight it was. My father worked this place to the bone from sunrise till dark. Days in, days out. Why, he stood right here, serving the public on the morning the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor and started World War II. Uh, Pa, I'm pretty sure World War II started a few years prior, in Europe. Bullshit, son. Up until that point, it was nothing more than a petty squall between a few cheese-loving surrender monkeys. Then we got involved and showed them how a real war works. And you wonder why I struggle to relate to your worldview? Look, that's all ancient histories now. But me and your dear mother, God rest her, we then took over this place and we worked tirelessly to provide for you. And for what? I barely saw either of you. We weren't a family. You were a slave to this place. Ma worked herself to the bone and where did it get her? An early grave. That's where. Her heart would be breaking if she could hear you talking like that, son. We wanted nothing more than to give you a future. Pa... This store has been dying a slow death for decades. A small store like this, it can't compete with 24-hour convenience chains. Look at it. There's canned goods on the shelves that are older than me. It's like a time capsule in here. It reminds people of how great this nation once was and can be again. The nation is what the nation is. It's no better or worse, it's just moved on. Unlike this place. When you was running this place, you can modernize it however you like. Pa, today is a new day. The sun is shining. There's a whole vibrant city, a world out there, and there's an actual alien spaceship hovering over the city. You must know that this, this is never going to be my life. Unless those alien assholes want to get off their out of green butts and offers you a job, it's the best you got, son. But- No, no buts. We done rambled on much too long anyhow. The storeroom floor ain't gonna sweep itself. Go make yourself useful. I know you think this is a waste of time and effort, but until you actually invest a bits of both in something yourself, you ain't no position lectures me about it. <sighs> Thanks, Pa. Good talk. Real motivating. That's what I'm here for, son. Now move your ass. Right, Clyde! What are the numbers telling you? <sighs> Literally everything is down, Glenn. It's a massacre on Wall Street. Currencies and equities are in the toilet, oil is trying to crawl back underground, and gold and silver have recorded the biggest daily losses since the Chernobyl disaster. And crypto? It took a hit with the equities. Tried to rally, but it turned out to be a series of dead cat bounces. It's up and down, like a nun on a cucumber patch. Ouch! Surely sore in the morning! <laughs> So, in among this cottage, what is cooking? Nothing solid. The preppers have been out in force. They're anticipating it's all going to go full-on War of the Worlds. Sales and bomb shelter building materials have tripled. Long-life foods, tents, and first aid kits all ticking upward. And home defense? Firearms? Guns, guns, and more guns. And an upsurge in sales of the Bible. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Klein, get some cash in the sporting goods chains. We might escape a triple on those if we time it right. Amen to that. Oh, what a day. Keep monitoring everything. The markets are waiting on the next move from the little green man and their flying saucer. As soon as they nail their colors to the wall, it'll give the market a strong signal. When it happens, I need you on it like flies on a corpse. We are currently nearly 50% down on war portfolios across the board. Time this right, and it's just been a tough day on the markets. Get it wrong, and we're all sleeping on the streets by this time tomorrow. Alright, end the meeting. Back to your desks and assume attack formation. Dismissed! And still we wait for a sign from our mysterious visitors. How long will they maintain their silence? Let's see what people here think. How about you, madam? Well, obviously I hope they come in peace, but I worry that they've come to carry out terrible and human experiments on us. And if they have, what do you plan to do? 
I'm thinking if they leave me and the kids alone, I'd happily let them take my husband. And they say romance is dead. Moving along, what about you, sir? I'm telling you, man, for sure, it's an invasion. 100%. We're here to suck out our brains, man. It's like the movies, man. It's like invasion of the brain suckers. Master Jordan, while we also believe that at the heart of this there is indeed divine meaning... Yes indeed, praise almighty God. But we just think that you might have been a little premature in pronouncing that the spaceship was a chariot of angels sent by God. Well, what on God's green earth do you think it is then? That's just it, isn't it? It's not on God's green earth, and so far it's giving no indication of anything other than it's happy to hover a couple of thousand feet above God's green earth. Have faith, my brother. All will be revealed. And there are a lot of things it could do, and if those things deviate in any way from your pronouncement this morning, we could end up with egg on our faces. For 2,000 years we've maintained that the Bible contained the answers and we've spent that time interpreting, quoting and moulding these scriptures into some kind of coherent narrative for our worshippers. My dear Bishop, do you doubt it? The Bible is full of many strange and cryptic depictions that we truly can't begin to understand. But nowhere in there does it mention the arrival of a giant spaceship. The Lord works in mysterious ways, brother. So it would seem, Pastor Jordan, very mysterious indeed. And we're seeing... What is that? I think it's lights! Lights, ladies and gentlemen, flashing, blinking dots of red and orange at various points all over the exterior, pulsing in a kind of cyclical pattern. This is the first sign of any kind of interaction from the extraterrestrial craft, but obviously we have no clue what it means. Is it a greeting, or a warning, or are they preparing to land? We just don't know. All we can do is wait and see what happens next. Lights! This could be the sign! Glad talk to me! The markets are turning red, right across the board, Glenn. Okay, so the markets have seen the lights and are pissing their big boy pants. Probably word we're about to be boned by giant alien cock. How much are we up on firearms? They're going through the roof. Seven times. Okay, consolidate on 50%. The rest, uh, hold to see if it goes up to 10 times. But settle on 8.5 if it starts moving sideways. Not much else to write home about. We could short a few banks. Risky. Settle maybe 20 mil. Spread bet on the big five, but don't get greedy. There's maybe 20% for certain, but beyond that, it's a loaded gun pointing at your balls. Post-invasion, if that's what this is, we might need to get our funds abroad. The USA is toxic at the moment. It's a concern, that's for sure. The liquidity is drying up fast. Look for big dips offshore. Stuff that'll probably spring back up if this turns out to be nothing, but won't get destroyed if we start seeing death rays here. Hong Kong and India sound appealing right now. But who here benefits if this is an invasion? We aren't going to be in much of a position if we get obliterated. Not even Darth Vader would be able to wipe out capitalism! We're the financial equivalent of the Jedi Knights! Use the fucking Force, Klein! I don't care if it's the size of Lower Manhattan, Ned. I need more than that. What about the lights? Yes, I know they're goddamn lights. I can see their lights. I'm familiar with the concept of lighting. But what is the context here? What are they for? What do they signify? I got generals calling me asking if we should prepare to dust off the big red button. Ed, what am I supposed to tell them? What I want from NASA is an accurate threat assessment. No! Waiting to see if they're gonna vaporize us isn't a threat assessment, Ed. 
That's effectively like being caught in a searchlight with your pants down and your dick in your hand. I'm not getting caught with my dick in my hand, Ed. That's not going to happen. Do you hear? Not again. And the atmosphere here, some eight hours since the spaceship arrived, is reaching a feverish pitch. The strange lights we observed earlier are still pulsing gently on the ship, but no further development since. Wait a second. I think... I think something is happening. It was hard to hear over the sound of the crowd, but gradually raising in volume, I can hear a sound. It's definitely emanating from the ship. I don't know if you're hearing this at home. It's a kind of low drone, but the volume and pitch are rising. It almost sounds like mild audio feedback. And there, something is opening on the front of the ship. People aren't sure what to do here. I'm hearing that some people think it's a weapon that's about to be unleashed. The mood here is shifting. Although a lot of people are staying right where they are, convinced that whatever comes out of the ship, they're going to be here to see it, or hear it first. We watch on, ladies and gentlemen. A definite sense of tension and expectation is now rising in the air here. Citizens of Earth, greetings. We are simultaneously broadcasting to every nation on your planet in every language. It is our hope that our words reach every single person the world over. We are an ancient and technologically advanced race, clearly far more so than you. We first detected your planet 200 of your Earth years ago. Since then, we've observed your advancement, your development. But we've also seen your wars, your inequality, and we've also seen the devastation you've unleashed upon your world itself. The pollution, the destruction of your planet's atmosphere, the poisoning of your oceans. And we came here... to help. We thought that we might be able to save you from yourselves. However, having observed you up close for a short while, we've kind of thought better of it. This one is on you, I'm afraid. We're going to just leave you to it. In another 200 years, assuming you're still here, we might come back round this way and check you out again. But we don't hold out much hope. Sorry, nice to see you all. Best of luck, you're most certainly gonna need it. Bye! Well, extraordinary scenes here. The visitors have spoken to us, briefly, and now it appears that's it. They've seen enough and they're going back to wherever they came from. Yes, we can see the ship is ascending higher into the sky. There it goes. It seems they've observed the human race and found us wanting. Let's get some opinions from some of the people who've been here pretty much all day waiting for this. I'm looking at the faces, and all I can see is confusion, disappointment. The whole day feels like an enormous anticlimax. You, sir, I believe we heard from you earlier in the day. How do you feel about things now? Yes, sir, I've been here all day, and I just wanted to say the sheer audacity of these aliens. Turning up here, disrupting the way of things. In a few years' time, when we got big spaceships of our own, we'll just turn up at their home world unannounced. See how they like it! And they just up and left? Yes, Mr. President. They said their piece. Then the ship ascended through the atmosphere, then vanished off the scopes. Like it was never even there. What an enormous waste of time and effort that was. You know, I'd be fine with it if they had done the whole we come in peace thing. Or even if they'd come in the name of war. We all know where we are with war, but not even a take me to your leader or anything like that. How arrogant of them. What a huge fuss over absolutely nothing. What now? We're heading back to DC, ETA, about four hours. The press office wants you to address the nation from the Oval Office. Aw, oh, crap. It'll be past midnight before we get to that. And what am I supposed to say to the nation? We've been visited by technologically advanced aliens from another world, but don't worry. They took one look at us and fucked off right back home. I dread to think what this is going to do to my polling numbers. Commander in chief snubbed by aliens. That's what the headlines will be tomorrow. Just what I need. And you're scheduled to brief the heads of staff remotely. They're ready and waiting when you are. 
What? Now? Seriously? Fine. Patch me through. And bring me more coffee. Lots of it. Most significant event in human history, my ass! So? Well... Not much to report. The audio from the spaceship was... Well... Audio. They were able to transmit to pretty much every newsfeed, TV channel, and radio station the world over. God, even the online ones. And simultaneously broadcast in the native language of each region. The tech behind that must be truly incredible. And have we learned anything about this tech? Um, not a thing. We literally have no clue how they did it. To hijack that many feeds, bypassing the security and all of them all at the same time. It's light years ahead of anything we can do. So, what do we know? With revised measurements, we now know that the ship was conclusively, actually slightly bigger than Manhattan. That is, the whole of Manhattan. I'll be sure to include that in my briefing report for the president. Being that's literally all we know. Okay, go home. The pair of you. It's late. See you both tomorrow. We can get back to actually trying to learn something useful about the universe. And so, brothers and sisters, after 2,000 long years, we finally heard a direct message from God. You might be having doubts. You might be thinking that this wasn't God you were hearing. Let me tell you this. We heard from God, all right, and his infinite wisdom. He has deemed us unready to receive his message. We are unworthy, but we will redouble our efforts, and the next time he reaches out to us, we will be ready. Praise the Lord. Amen. Early forecasts for tomorrow say a massive rebound in the markets. Everything will most likely be in double digits into the green. See you back at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. We have a lot of ground to make up. Ah, uh, it's going to be business as usual. Is your safe all locked up? Sure is, Pa. And the storeroom? Yeah. Whew, okay then. Let's call it a night. You know, right now he got a face like a dog that's finally met the female dog of his dreams. <laughs> the day after his owner just had him neutered. You feeling a bit let down with the whole aliens thing? Well, naturally. Told you'd be something to nothing, son. You did. Congratulations. I just hoped. Longed it would be something that could change life. My life. And change the world. Forever. Son, you can only rely on the constant things in life. Like this door, this place, it's a constant. It'll always be here. So it would seem. And one day it'll all be yours, son. Don't remind me, Pa. See you in the morning. Try and be on time if you imagine, eh? Good night, son. Night, Pa. You've been listening to Strange New Worlds and Spaced Out Tales. Episode 11, Just Another Day in the Big Apple, was written by Jim Cogan and starred Tally Tenner as Steve, Joe Kilcar as Rod Teller, Stephen Newhand as the President, Pastor Jordan and Jazz, Alexis Parker as Presidential Aide Number 1, Cat McQueen as Presidential Aide Number 2, Archer Youngstone as Glenn, Caleb Detheridge as Klein, Marie Grace as Maria, Jim Cogan as the Bishop, Cisco de Guzman as Ed and Clarence, Lauren Deacon as Mary and Karen, Antonio Ferreira as Pa, 
Nathaniel Libadarov as Sam, and John Kennard as The Voice. Production and sound design were by Jim Cogan, opening theme music by Jim Cogan, and all incidental music and sound effects were licensed from Envato Elements. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please do subscribe, like, maybe even leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts. You can also visit our website at snwasot.com and you can follow us on that social media platform that used to be called Twitter, twitter twitter.com slash snwasot. Or you can email us, email at snwasot.com. Until next time, thanks for listening.